Cowabunga dudes, what's happening? It's Trent here, and I'm taking you all the way back to the 80s, man. Ninja Turtles were the first comic book I ever bought, and I used to trace that Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird goodness, and uh, later even got to cross over with my own indie comic Creed back in the 90s, but bam! Anyway, I got a chance to uh, take a fresh take on these guys, uh, using a little bit of Sketchbook Pro action. I'm going to show you guys how to get a little bit more of that watercolory goodness in your own totally radical paintings. First things first, I, I realized I was a little bit rusty. I had to uh, had to re-familiarize myself with how to draw a Ninja Turtle. Uh, when I was a little kid, I got a, a comic. It was actually called How to Draw Ninja Turtles. This was one of the first uh, comics I ever bought, and it actually was one of the first things that got me drawing comics. Um, so I used to kind of do a lot of uh, uh, drawing in Ninja Turtles. They were pretty awful with like a Sharpie pen and all that sort of a thing. But in this case, using Sketchbook Pro and the magic and the power of the digital age, I was able to really quickly start to sketch out a bunch of different body types and really sort of decide, okay, what kind of a muscular build do I want for these guys? Do I want them to feel agile or do I want them to feel kind of like heavy and and uh, the tank-like, or what, what, what look am I going for? And I kind of settled on something that felt very muscular, but still uh, had a kind of a sleekness and an agility to it. I decided to go with the sleekness and agility in the pose itself, but I'm keeping it all super loose. I mean, look at this thing. Ah, what a mess. We're gonna make something nice out of this by the end. Though. I used to draw the Ninja Turtles with just like straight up, uh, like squared off kind of handles and things like that. And I want to do something a little more funky with this one. So I decided to give it like, uh, this is obviously a Leonardo. And so I wanted to give him like this kind of a dragon katana. I, I went online, I did a little bit of research. I found some really ornate kind of dragon head kind of katanas and things like that. And I started looking at that for inspiration. I also wanted to focus entirely on the grayscale image and figuring out where can I just cut away where I don't even need any line art at all. I don't need any kind of uh, sketchy lines anywhere. This piece actually came together super fast. I did uh, most of the, the drawing process up to this point using my grainy pencil, which uh, if you have my brush set for Sketchbook Pro, super easy to use. You, it should be very familiar to you. And then I switched over to using my more of an oil paint brush. That's the third one down on the right column. And that's when I started to really get that, that Sumie kind of a brush style. And I thought that Ninja Turtles were a perfect place to do this because they're very inspired by some Japanese style cultural influence with the whole ninja thing. So I tied in a little bit of that kind of a Sumie brush style, like from the old uh, paintings, but I, I can't help it. I wanted to really go in there and add a lot more detail. So I started getting a little funky with like the belts and I added a few um, like trinkets and, and things like that. And even towards the end, you'll see, I started to add armor onto it, onto his legs and things like that, because I just didn't want to go super plain with it. One of the things that you'll notice with this particular brush is that you can go really fat or really thin and you also get these sort of stray brush strokes. If you've never used a Sumie brush, you can go to a regular, uh, if you have a Michaels or an arts and crafts store, you can pick one up for only a couple of bucks and just try it out on paper and it's a lot of fun because you'll notice one of the things that happens is every now and then you get this stray bristle and that stray bristle will create this happy accident. And there's something about painting with happy accidents that gets you a very organic, energized look. So what do I mean when I'm talking about a happy accident? I think I'm talking about just splotching massive clumps of spattered paint and then making sense of that. Just pushing and pulling using color dab and white, color dab and black, and start to just make a little bit of sense out of this like kind of mess. It's, it's extremely scientific and not advisable for everybody to do. You know, so as a, as a strong contrasting example, uh, the last piece that I posted, which was the Ghost in the Shell redesign, I was so meticulous about all the details. I, I just, I wanted to show every little buckle and every little gear and every little tiny little zipper <laughs> on each piece. And I got so controlling with it, I spent just hours and hours, I think maybe 15 or 16 hours on that painting. And yet, it sort of lost a little bit of its impact. And so this piece I wanted to 
really back that off a little bit, a little bit of, you know, go with a little bit less of my own intention and try to find, well, what happens in those negative spaces? You know, what happens in those areas where the stray brush stroke or the stray bristle creates a little sketch line, a little energy line, you know? What happens in those paint spatters, you know? And there's an interesting thing that occurs, especially when you start playing around with overlay layers and color dodge layers and things like that. You start to get these, what I, I mean, I call them happy accidents, but it's really almost this kind of controlled chaos. It's like, I don't know what's going to happen next, but I'm going to keep working with it until it becomes something that looks good to me. And that's a really comfortable place to be. And it's sort of reflective, I think, of my current mindset, which is, yeah, I have intention. You know, I wanted to make an energetic looking Ninja Turtle, but I don't have so much intention that I want to define every pattern and every little buckle and every little bead on that's wrapped around his neck or anything like that. Like I wanted to let it come to life on its own. Don't try to control it. Don't try to detail the hell out of it. Just let it live. Let it breathe. Let it be whatever it's going to be. If that means you're going to have this really strong red contrast and the piece ends up being monochromatic, then so be it, you know, but, uh, Keep exploring and until as long as you're having fun I think the most important thing when you're doing a personal piece like this is to have fun with it now just before I wrap this one up I want to demystify a few little cheap little tricks that I used here uh, so this is the final version one of the things that I did uh, was I added a little bit of color to my shadow areas by going up here to the selection tool let me just merge everything if everything's on one layer you could select that color and then um, actually a better way to do it would be to copy that and then paste it now that's the only item on a new layer so now if you go to uh, color adjust hue saturation you can actually add a little bit of color and saturation to that you can make that whatever you want um, which is a pretty handy trick Another way that you could do that is uh, by clicking this little lock button here and then hitting the whole thing with an airbrush. So if you wanted that to be like a bright purple in your shadows, you could do that. So that's the way that I did that. The next thing that I cheated on a lot was uh, what's going on back here. Uh, you can see how the knee pad here, which looks like a little bit like this, kind of kind of goes in here and then it kind of fades into this big splotch of, of black. And uh, I added a little bit of, like brought out a little bit of edge color there. Um, the structure of that foot almost really doesn't make a lot of sense. But uh, you know what? You didn't notice. Nobody noticed. Nobody called me out on that. So I got away with it this time. All right. You can too, but it just hide things in shadows. So a lot of comic book artists did that in the 90s. Made millions, millions hiding feet in shadows. Dudes, that about wraps it up for me with my Leonardo Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, illustration. I want to thank Sketchbook Pro so much for providing me with the opportunity to do these paintings for you on a monthly basis. I got some cool new ones coming up very soon that I can't wait to share with you guys. If you are hardcore and serious about doing digital art, I do give away all of my secrets and tips about digital art in my box sets of tutorials over there on the uh, Gumroad channel. You can see the link in the text field below the video. If you just enjoy seeing the magic and uh, watching paintings come together and hearing me talk about how I do them, uh, please subscribe. I'm here pretty much posting every week now, at least one to two videos a week. Until next time, dudes, remember, if you're gonna draw a totally radical cowabunga dude ninja turtle, draw a totally radical cowabunga ninja turtle with some freaking passion, man. Yeah.